What if I told you that humility is a trap and it's actually holding back your career? Hi, I'm Emily. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. And over here, my goal is to help you thrive in your nine to five and beyond. I've been a recruiter for over seven years. I'm a career coach. I'm a writer for Canadian Business Magazine. Trust me when I say professional growth is kind of my jam. And if it's yours too, please consider subscribing, like this video, and let's get on into it. Why is it that the older we get, the more likely we are to diminish our own worth and our own skills? And how does that impact where you're at in your career? And most especially with how much money you can make? There's a lot of factors, a lot of answers, and ultimately it all boils down to Woo! capitalism. Yep, capitalism doesn't actually want to see us succeed. And I don't think I have enough memory on this SD card to make a whole video series about capitalism. Outside of the fact that we live in a society where our worth is pretty much determined by our job title and how much money we make, there are some other subtle things that happen to us as we get older that make us dim our light and eventually develop this pretty little thing called imposter syndrome. I think we can all agree that we had teachers and parents and friends that basically told us it was rude to show off and to boast. And we grow up with this mindset that we need to keep the good things about ourselves quiet so we don't make other people uncomfortable. And that's such a sad thought. We have spent our whole lives working hard to be successful, to make something of ourselves. And every time we have a proud moment, we're shamed for telling people about it. And now that you are probably in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, you're realizing that you've dimmed your light so much that it's getting kind of hard to see. There are also countless studies from a psychological perspective that tell us how we speak about ourselves can directly impact how we feel about ourselves. So if we spend all of our primitive years, let's call it age 10 to age 20, constantly deflecting compliments and keeping our wins to ourselves, don't you think subconsciously we're not going to think that we're the bee's knees anymore? The humility, the anxiety, and the capitalism oftentimes create this really nasty potion that we can now call imposter syndrome. You might have heard this phrase before. It's one that is literally booming on the internet right now, but it's essentially a term for that yucky little voice in the back of your head that is constantly telling you that you are not smart enough, that you are not good enough, and that everyone around you agrees. Everyone around you thinks that you're an idiot. Yeah, it's, it's a harsh voice. <laughs> In fact, over 70% of the workforce in North America has said they've dealt with imposter syndrome at some point or another. What's particularly disturbing about facts when it comes to imposter syndrome is that it disproportionately impacts women and women of color the most. If you're wondering why imposter syndrome might disproportionately impact women, particularly women of color and black women, well, just take a step back. If all of these small ways that we were raised impact all of us so much, think about all of the other implications like race and gender. Think of things like body image, what you see on the media, how we define what a B-I-T-C-H is. Yeah, guess what? Spoiler alert. A B-I-T-C-H in a movie is typically just a woman who's direct and knows what she wants. She's kind of fantastic. So I'm saying all of this for what? Why am I telling you about the origins of imposter syndrome? Well, other than the fact that I love to complain about capitalism while simultaneously participating in it, it is literally going to cost you money. And at some point, I promise it's going to cost you your mental health. I want to talk about what those implications are. And then we're going to talk about how the heck you're you're gonna get over it, okay? I'm a recruiter. It's obviously no secret that most recruiters lowball you when you're issued a job offer. Not me, I swear I'm one of the good ones. But when you don't negotiate, you are fundamentally leaving money on the table every single time you move jobs. What's messed up about imposter syndrome is that it obviously impacts the confidence you have in yourself, which means you are much less likely to negotiate. AKA, you're probably going to be leaving money on the table for every single job you move into for the rest of your career unless you deal with it. And imposter syndrome right now most intensely impacts the millennial generation. My people, millennials, stand up. When in fact, almost 58% of millennials have reported that they did not negotiate the salary in their current job. Do you know how much money is most likely being left on the table for these individuals? Like that is a life-changing amount of cash just waiting to be claimed. If you're not going to deal with your imposter syndrome, you're probably also not going to be asking for promotions. You're not going to ask for raises or additional projects. You know why? Because you're too busy telling yourself you don't deserve it. You're too busy psyching yourself out of actually stepping into your power, opening up your light and realizing that when you shine, you give the other people around you an opportunity to shine as well. And of course, I don't want you to have a mentee bee, which by the way, is my new favorite phrase. Um, my Gen Z cousin taught me it. It basically means mental breakdown. It's 
not going to come to you as much of a surprise, but when you have imposter syndrome that you don't deal with, you are heightening your anxiety. You are likely heightening your risks for things like depression, for all other kinds of unfortunate places you can be in from a mental health perspective. Let me tell you something, closed mouths do not get fed. If you authentically want to make money, grow your career, be successful, build generational wealth, I'm telling you, you just sitting there quiet is not going to cut it. I'll keep it real with you. Have I fundamentally cured imposter syndrome with these next tips? Eh, probably not. What I will say is when I first started my career, when I was like 19 or 20, I would come home from work sobbing every night. I'm not being dramatic. I would drive home crying. I would get into bed, cry over the most ridiculous, nonsensical things. I would be stressed out about an email I sent that was incorrect, or I'd be worried that I shouldn't ask for a raise because I'm not smart. I'm not actually that good. It's easy. Anyone can do this job. Spoiler alert. That's not true. That's another lie that you're telling yourself. I went from that dark, sad place place into now literally having a career coaching other people and stepping into their confidence. I want you to start with your social circle, both at work and outside of it. Basically, if you are constantly surrounded by people who are not uplifting you and reminding you of your worth and why you should be confident, you're doing yourself a disservice. I cannot emphasize the importance of having a strong mentor, especially a mentor that works in your field to be your ride or die and your person, because they are going to be an amazing resource, not only to help you grow, from a career perspective, but to also give you kind of a reality check. I know with my mentor, sometimes if I make a mistake or I have to give a big presentation at work, I can call her, talk her through my strategy, and she goes, yeah, that's kind of brilliant. You need to believe in yourself. And sometimes that's all it takes is one more person looking at you and saying, I see you, you are qualified, you're gonna shine. However, only so much validation can come from other people when it needs to ultimately come from ourselves. And it is a bit of a practice. We do need to set up like relationships and a sense of community so that we can evolve into self-validating because that is our ideal state. But my number one tip for removing imposter syndrome from your life is keeping a list. I know, it sounds silly. I want you to moving forward, keep a list of all of your wins and I don't care how small they are. It could be the fact that you brush your teeth this morning. It could be that you sent out the email that had no punctuation errors. Keep track of every single win. This is going to help you when it's time to ask for a raise. Hello, you are eligible for a raise. You are qualified. It reminds you that you have a right to ask. And most importantly, when you're having a crummy day and you're like, oh, I should not be in this job. I am stupid. I am an idiot. It, you can look back on this list and realize, oh wait, I kind of slayed, like I kind of slayed that. All of these things are going to institute something that I like to refer to, and I think, is it Gary Vee who also says this? But maybe he says this as well, and he's far louder than I, so let's just give it to him. But it's facts over feelings. You might feel underqualified, you might feel like a fraud, you might feel like everybody is going to find out you're not that smart, but factually, you have X number of years of work experience. You are a strong communicator. You are working hard. You are doing your best. Factually, you're doing just fine. Your feelings are not going to be something you can keep relying on when it comes to work and your professional growth. I did allude to this a little bit before, but you also need to eliminate all of this self-deprecating BS from your vocabulary. When people compliment you, own it. Say thank you period, end of sentence. You don't need to keep deflecting back onto them. People who are authentically complimenting you aren't looking for a compliment back. They're literally just complimenting you. You need to stop diminishing your accomplishments and you need to start shining. Tell your group chat that you just got promoted. Text your friend and tell them you just had a great presentation. Guess what? If you actually have a good circle, they're gonna be excited to see that. They want to see you shine. And if you don't have a mentor or you don't have a network or a community, consider this to be your pep talk. Your job or your studies, whatever it is that you're focusing on, is not easy. It's not like anyone can do it. It only feels like that because you're really good at it. For some other people, that is so outside of the realm of possibility. You are smart. You are in the room because you deserve to be in the room. The only person who pays attention to your tiny mistakes is you. Nobody else is noticing those little details. In fact, making tiny mistakes is a part of life you are never going to be able to get rid of. And most of the high value learning we have as humans comes from mistakes. 
So yeah, being humble is a little bit of a trap when we take it so far that it becomes self-deprecating and veers into the scary space of imposter syndrome. But you're not an imposter. If you are in the room, it is because you deserve to be in the room. I really hope that this video was helpful. If you have questions or you just need like a sounding board or someone to talk to, hit me up in those comments. Don't forget, I post a video on this channel every week. I also have a podcast that focuses on career tips called The Straight Shooter Recruiter. And you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at emily.b.recruiter. I also have my merch dropping soon. So keep an eye out for that. That's happening at the end of the month. But I love you, love you, love you. And I will talk to you in my next video.